Well, good morning, everybody. It is so good to see you all here this morning on this beautiful day. I think it's very beautiful out this weekend. My family and I, we went to Bald Knob Cross yesterday, and it was just a gorgeous day all day yesterday, and it's going to be even more gorgeous today, and I love it. Well, welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you all are here in worship with us here this morning. For those of you who are new to our church or are visiting, I am Pastor Abe, and I'm the assistant pastor here, and I'm so glad that we get to be you all here with us. And welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. We're glad that you're able to join us on our live stream and still be a part of our worship, even though you're probably sitting at home in your pajamas. If only I could come to church in my pajamas. No, I'm not going to do that. Of course not. Of course not. My wife, my, my wife likes, when it, likes it when I wear a tie, so that's, when I, that's why I come to church. Well, this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. We're almost done. We're almost through Lent. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then Easter Sunday after that. We're almost there. So if you gave up something and you're, like, really craving it, just know, like, two more Sundays and you're there. Before we begin our worship, I do have a handful of other announcements uh, for our church. Feel free to join a small group that we have here at our church. We have some wonderful small groups. We have a men's group that meets Tuesday mornings at 8.30 via Zoom. We have our women's group called Grateful Hearts that meets here at the church on Wednesday afternoons at 1.30, but they also have a Zoom option. And then we have our Sunday scripture class that meets in between our church services. Uh, then they just, they study the scripture that is preached on every Sunday. And I think it's, it's a wonderful class in my opinion. Youth group has continued to meet. We are meeting Wednesday night at 6, and it's for grades 6 through 12. All youth are welcome. I'm like, the more the merrier. I, we enjoy it. We have fun time with games, and we have snacks that they all devour, and we, we throw a Bible lesson in here and there. Uh, I want to throw out an announcement for those of you with children. Um, on this upcoming Saturday, April 1st, the Rise Up Kids Conference is happening at Marion Aldersgate United Methodist Church. I think they're still United Methodist Church. Anywho, um, it starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 2 p.m., and it's for grades 1 through 5. Um, and if you want to register it for it, you can go to www.kidsconference.org, and they'd be happy to have any child come from within the area. I also want to announce that also this upcoming Saturday, Saturday Night Live is meeting. I forgot to announce that at first service. And uh, they're meeting this Saturday, April 1st, at Bandana's Barbecue at 5.30. Um, there will be plenty of room. They had, I was told, 40 people last, last month, and so... Come on out. Um, you can contact Sharon Sims or the church office if you'd like to go. And it's at Bandana's Barbecue. Mm, that sounds yummy. I like barbecue. Being living near Kansas City, it's hard not to like barbecue. <laughs> uh, also, look out for our Monday morning blog that gets posted on our Facebook page tomorrow as we wrap up our, our month on Psalm 23. I'm kind of sad. I've enjoyed writing on Psalm 23 all month. So I'm like, I'm sad, but that's okay. We're, gonna, we're getting into Easter and Palm Sunday, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Our Holy Week is right around the corner. Like I said, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, so we'll have, you know, the procession of the palms, and everyone will wave it, and I'll, I'll march around with our children, waving the palms during the first hymn. And then we have our Monday Thursday service on April 6th at 7 p.m. here in the church, and then Easter is April 9th, and we'll be here, and we'll have two services, and... I'm like, I can't believe it's already here. We're also having our family celebration on Easter Sunday between the first and second services. So at 930, we'll have activities for our children to do. And we'll have uh, some volunteers handing out prizes, some candy, things like that. And it's just a fun way for our children to celebrate Easter. That will happen in between our church services. Um, also, if you're new to our church, you've... Been, or you've been coming, but you want to get more connected, feel free to fill out one of those pink connection cards that are in front of the, in the pew in front of you and leave it in the offering plates in the back. We would love to keep you in the loop of what is going on at our church. For any other announcements I may have forgotten, you can check the bulletin, the church website, or our monthly newsletters and our weekly emails that we send out. Um, and now I would like to invite up Gail White to introduce our Minute Minute speaker. Mission Minute. Thanks, Pastor Abe. It's a real privilege and honor to welcome Joe Bernard to be with us in our services this morning. Uh, Joe is the CEO of Sparrow Family Services. 
Many of you who go back uh, several years in the Methodist Church uh, will remember United Methodist Children's Home uh, based in Mount Vernon. The organization really goes back over 100 years um, to when it was founded in Creole Springs and then due to a fire um, in 1913, I think you said, Joe, uh, the organization was moved to Mount Vernon. In the past few years, um, what was the United Methodist Children's Home has uh, moved far beyond serving as an orphanage. Um, while they do still provide um, residential services on the campus at Mount Vernon, the new, newly named and branded uh, Sparrow Family Services has gone much farther, much wider and much deeper in terms of providing social services throughout Southern Illinois. Uh, Sharon Sims and I have had the privilege of serving as board of directors uh, for Sparrow for a few years now. Uh, as the organization has gone through a transition, Joe goes back 21 years um, as CFO for Sparrow, previously United Methodist Children's Home, and then last year moved into the CEO uh, position. And I think I speak accurately for Sharon and myself as well as uh, the other board members that we have been very uh, pleased and impressed with Joe's strong leadership of that organization. We've had some uh, trying times as most businesses and not-for-profit organizations have during the COVID period. And Joe's strong leadership and confidence uh, among the staff who serve under Joe have, uh, have really gotten us through to a much stronger position these days. Um, as I say, you may be more familiar with United Methodist Children's Home as uh, the organizational name, but the insert in your bulletin today, if you look at number 14, uh, under the Illinois Great Rivers uh, Council uh, Conference sponsored programs, you'll see Sparrow Family Services there. So without further ado, Joe, welcome to First United Methodist Church. Thanks, Thanks Gail. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That was, uh, I appreciate Gail's um, support and confidence in me. I, I guess I, he's kind of set the bar kind of high now, hasn't he? I have something that I need to uh, live up to. So yes, I, uh, my name is Joe Bernard. I'm with Sparrow Family Services. Um, uh, and I just had the opportunity to meet with your Sunday school class. We were able to talk about Sparrow for an hour. And I really, really appreciate the, the time that I was given and the, the questions from, from the group. So um, I just have a couple of minutes. So Sparrow, Gail mentioned that, uh, yes, we were United Methodist Children's Home um, for about 100 years. We've been Sparrow Family Services. The only thing that changed was our name. We did not change our connection to the Methodist Church. In fact, Sparrow, so Sparrow is Latin, and Sparrow, S-P-E-R-O, means I hope. And so hope is so very, very important to um, the, 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 the work we provide with our clients. As an organization, um, as a human service organization, we really exist for one purpose, and that is to help people. Our tagline is hope, help, and healing. And so we serve uh, well over 3,000 people a year. Um, we work with children. We work with families. Um, today we have 10 offices scattered around um, southern Illinois, and all of the work we provide is in the southern Illinois community. So um, from, a, uh, uh, from a, a connection to the Methodist Church standpoint, we were started by the Methodist Church. We, are still, we still uh, enjoy a very um, strong relationship with the Methodist Church. Um, we have a strong relationship with the conference and with the bishop. We are recipients of uh, funds from the Our Conference, Our Kids campaign. I'm sure that you're very well aware of the, the campaign. And that uh, uh, funds the spiritual life component of the work we do um, throughout our organization. Um, you know, child welfare, young people who live with us, they come from uh, very traumatic experiences and traumatic backgrounds. Uh, we find that to be uh, uh, very challenging yet very rewarding work. The work we do in the communities with uh, families, in-home counseling, uh, family counseling, working with the family unit, we find that to be equally challenging and rewarding. And um, we are appreciative and we thank you, uh, First um, uh, Carbondale, First uh, United Methodist Church, for your support of us. So uh, Gail mentioned 
We have, uh, uh, you've supported us with a couple of board members. We appreciate that very, very much. Um, we know that we're in your thoughts and your prayers, um, and you are one of the, the, the top churches in who supports our organization. So we thank you for your commitment to us. And I have to tell you that throughout the halls of uh, Sparrow Family Services, whether you realize it or not, we appreciate you all, and we are um, um, so very thankful that you have uh, uh, supported our work over the years. And I'm personally thankful uh, that you've invited us here today to speak with you all. So, um, again, thank you, and God bless. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. Let us not the, avoid the light of Christ, but surrender ourselves to it. We come to the light so that it may be clear that God is involved in all the good things we do. Our opening hymn is Lord of the Dance, number 261.
You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you this morning. You look good. Look at the person next to you and tell them, you look good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As we continue in our worship, a time of praising God and giving thanks, this is our time of pastoral prayer. And to all those who are watching online, of course you know we love knowing that you are present. And, and I truly love, uh, just recently, you know, we had a couple of uh, funerals and I met some members of the church or people who are constituents who come and worship with us at times. And they would tell, introduce themselves and they say, I watch you online. I think, oh my God, I hope it was a good Sunday. But we thank you so much for, for joining us in worship and remembering that God is with you no matter where you are, that you can always worship God. And so it's, it's so good that you're with us. So as we continue in our worship and our pastoral prayer, I'd like for you to uh, remember a young man. He's a SIU student. His name is Colton Benedict. He was in an accident uh, last week, and uh, he's part of the aviation group. And anyway, it's a very serious accident, and a student, a student from SIU remembered me. I don't know how he had my cell phone number, but he called and was telling me what happened, and we got in touch with the chaplain at the hospital and everything, and his parents were on their way here to Carbondale. But it was a serious accident, so I'd like for you guys to remember him as he goes through his healing and his parents and family as they pray for him. Also, as you remember, when I, I saw a, a met a, a family who were here, and, the, and one of the, the men, uh, he was in, in the sanctuary, and we were talking. He said he hadn't been, but was watching online. He said, you know, I have kidney problems too. I thought, oh, they're really listening. <laughs> but as you know, and, and part of my healing with that, with my kidney stones, uh, I will be leave tomorrow for Wichita in order to have some scanning done. And then I'll return uh, after I meet with the doctor and everything. So I'd like for you to keep me in prayer as I travel uh, back to Kansas and uh, check on my house while I was there and make sure it's still standing and whole and, uh, and visit with the medical professionals. Uh, so uh, please keep me in prayer. So let us pray. Let us pray together. Eternal God, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you, God, for your love and your Holy Spirit, for you always watching over and keeping us. We thank you, God, for the grace that you, you grant us and, the, and the, 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 the mercy that you give us. We thank you, God, you never forsake us. You never turn your back on us. You're always present. And so in that, God, we ask that you will touch and fill our weary and dry souls, that you will let us, Lord, continue to drink from the spring of your love so that we may never be thirsty again and, and receive all the gifts and the grace that you have. We pray for our church family, that you, God, will continue to use us as instruments of your love, that we are the example. And as we go through our own personal challenges in life, Lord, we ask that you will go with us and walk with us, sustain us, Lord, during these times. We pray that we may be strengthened in your, your grace and always in your love. And we pray for those who don't know you. We pray for family and friends, Lord, and ask that you be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. Bring them back, Lord with your heart of repentance. Lord, we love you. 
and we thank you. As a body, as believers in Jesus Christ, we too pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Ray. It's time for the children to come on down. <coughs> y'all this morning. Good, good. Y'all did a good job lighting the candles again. So we've talked all month about Psalm 23 and how God is our shepherd. We've talked a lot about it. Did you know that Jesus said he was the good shepherd? Did you know he said that? No. In John 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And he lays his life down for his sheep. Do you know who Jesus' sheep are? It is us. It's all of us here. It's you, it's me, everyone in the choir, everyone out there, and even all those who are watching with us online. We're all Jesus' sheep. He cares for us. He protects us. He guides us. Unlike his hired hands who run away whenever danger comes, like wolves <coughs> and thieves. If a wolf came, I would probably run away too, honestly. And as Jesus' is sheep, he knows everything about us. Even maybe some of those things we don't share with other people. He knows everything. And we get to know him more and more every day. And we also listen to Jesus' voice through things like hearing the Bible, hearing preaching. And Jesus always listens to us, no matter what we have to say. Even if we're angry, Jesus still listens to us. And Jesus wants everybody in the whole world to be a part of his flock. He wants everybody to be his sheep, especially those who aren't a part of his flock right now. And we are, and guess what? We're part of Jesus' flock now. Do you know what a flock is? It's the group of sheep, and we're all part of it. Can you believe that? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? I think it's pretty awesome. And, you know, Jesus died for us. He laid down his life for us. And he did so when he died on the cross. And that's why we celebrate Easter, because Jesus died, and then he came back to life. Have you ever seen anyone come back to life before? Jesus did it, and it was pretty awesome. And because Jesus died and came back to life, our sins are forgiven, and we can have a relationship with him and God. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have a good shepherd in Jesus Christ. <coughs> and that Jesus died for all of us. And we just thank you that we're able to be here and worship with you. And that we get to just learn more about how you are our shepherd who protects us and cares for us and guides us always. And that we get to be with one another this morning. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, girls, you can head on up to Children's Church. All right. This is the time now when we will uh, pass the peace. So uh, this morning, I asked you to put a smile on your face. Now I'm going to ask you to stand if you're able and willing, and let's wave at one another and give each other a big hug and. And just, you know, just greet one another this morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. As I always like to remind people, 
You know, you never know who may not have had a hug or a wave or anyone to just speak to them all week. So we want to make sure when they come to the house of the Lord that at least somebody said, hey, guys. <laughs> all right, you may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just love you guys. Of course, as we continue in our worship, we always remember uh, why we give of our tithes and offering. And as you heard earlier, when we uh, heard from, uh, don't, don't tell me, I, I'm terrible. Don't tell me, wait, don't say a word. Don't nobody, wait. Uh, 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 uh. Shh. <laughs> Joe, thanks for coming. <laughs> With Sparrow, we thank you so much. And you had mentioned we have a couple of board members from our church. Are they? Are you guys here? Okay, stand. Come on. Let so everyone will know. Yes, yeah, Sharon Sims and Gail White. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. This is what your giving does. It helps so many agencies and. And we help try to help so many people, especially here in Carbondale and around the area and those agencies that we support through the United Methodist Church. Your gifts make a difference in someone's lives. Your gifts give somebody hope and encouragement. And it reminds them and lets them know that they are not alone that somebody cares about them. And as a church, that is our purpose, not as a social gathering for us to feel good, but a, an instrument of God that God can use to bless others and, and where God is able to touch hearts and bring others closer to him through Jesus Christ. That's who we are. That's what we believe. And that's why we give of our tithes and offering. We support our church facility. We, we do all that we can. So as you know, uh, you can always give online. You can give, bring your offering and leave it in the offering plate or tray. And, and you can also bring it to the office. But your gifts are a blessing to so many people. And so with that being said, you know I'm not going to let you go today without making sure you giggle a little bit. Now, it didn't, this didn't go over too well at 8.15, so I'm going to see if you guys catch it. <laughs> a Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her five- and six-year-olds. And after explaining the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother, she asked, is there a commandment that teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters? And immediately this young kid spoke up. He said, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Amen. Amen, I hear. <laughs> Amen. Our scripture this morning is Hebrews 13. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. So for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you that you give us an opportunity in the building of your kingdom in touching so many lives. So, Lord, we ask that your holy presence will continue to come and continue to work through the gifts that we give and extend our love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Anita?
You may be seated. Is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
Beautiful, thank you. Wasn't that beautiful? I'm going to do something that Bob doesn't like. <laughs> I'm going to ask, can we give praise to God? For the choir? Amen. Come on, let's give it hand. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Bob does not allow us to clap. And I understand. The reason is because it's not entertainment. It's worship. It's all part of worship. And I, I honor and respect that. I really do. While I was finishing our last sermon for this series, the 23rd Psalm, I asked myself, why did you select the 23rd Psalm during this season of Lent? And I thought, you know, it's a ritual that we remember that dust we are and dust we shall return. And many times we walk through this ritual not really seriously thinking about the meaning of what it is. And as I was reading the 23rd Psalm and, and during this season of Lent, I had to think about with everything that's going on in our world, in our nation, in our community, with the economy, with the anxiety, the uncertainties, and everything that's going on in our personal lives. During this season of Lent, I'm wondering if we really are able to be in a spirit of repentance when we got have all this stuff going on in our head and in our heart. And the 23rd Psalm to me, when David wrote the Psalm to me, I don't believe David was on his deathbed when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, as we often use this Psalm during funerals. I believe that when David wrote this psalm, he wrote it knowing and believing that he has a future still ahead of him. So I selected, I'm using the sixth verse of the 23rd Psalm, where David wrote, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One morning when uh, my youngest son, Andrew, was 19, we talked about a goal that he had and what he wanted for his future. Now, he had a couple of friends that I really did not like. I'm going to be honest. They really didn't sit well with me. Being a parent, some of you may understand. They were friends who seemed to have an influence on him that always kept him in harm's way. I noticed how they would cling on him, and they, and, they, and they had enough appeal that they could delay him from his future. As a young black male, I knew that it would not take much for society to hold him back or for him to feel that he was less than. One arrest, one misdemeanor, one ticket could prevent him from furthering his education or job he wanted to achieve. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time could put, place him in prison or in somebody's morgue. Even associating with the wrong crowd at a wrong time could place him in an environment of addiction, and it scared me. It frightened me. So my advice to him at that time and to my grandson today, who's 19, I told him, I said, don't worry, don't allow 
Don't allow anyone or anything keep you from reaching your goals or your future. Stay focused on God's purpose and plan for your life. And this is the message that I want to share with you today. Don't allow anyone or anything influence you to take your eyes off your future, your goal. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. David, the psalmist wrote, he said, said, goodness, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David had a goal in mind. He knew his, his future was before him. He wanted, he wanted to make sure after all his work is done here on earth that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And with everything David experienced, David made bad decisions. He had a weakness for women. He had, he had a lack of self-control. Enemies were trying to kill him. And God, but God's hand was continually guiding and blessing him even in his weakness for David to succeed and and reach his future he had to stay focused now to remain focused means that that you have your thoughts and your pursuit directed towards your goal The Apostle Paul understood this when he wrote to the church of Philippi in Philippians. He said, I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching unto those things that are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward that. Paul says, I do. I do, which indicates to me that what he does in life is with purpose. He had a plan. When you rise in the morning, he said, I do. When I go about my day, I do. When I lie down at night, I do. All that takes place in my life, all my functions, all my intentions, all is done with with purpose leading to something. Too many people in this world are simply existing without purpose or plan, simply just breathing. They function without any hope of achieving anything. They they don't plan, they don't dream, they don't hope. Their attempt is only to wake up in the morning and go to bed at night. And what they do not know is just just attempting to exist is really unsustainable. It is emotionally and spiritually harmful. Oscar Wilde, an Irish writer and poet, he once said, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist and that is all. Existing refers to to remain alive and just continue to be. And it can be described as doing what is necessary. When comparing it to existing, when comparing existing and living, living means to enjoy your life. Enjoy your life and, and relish every moment of it. That's the difference. And Paul, in his letter to to the church, he said, And as I do, I do so reaching unto those things that are before me. He's reaching for something. But not just anything, but, but something that will help him reach his goal. If you want to do something in life, reach for those things that will help you become and be what God has for your life. There are some people in my life, in my personal life, that that I love dearly, but I don't interact with them also, often, not, not much at all. And why? Because they do not encourage me to fulfill God's purpose for my life. If if all they do is gossip. And I don't see any fruit. I ask myself, how are they going to help me reach my goal? 
If all they do is complain and, and find fault with everything and everyone, then how would they help me become a better person? If all they do is lie or, or speak words that are negative and destructive, then how are they going to help me live up to God's standard? The Bible teaches us that, that Jesus, at one point in his ministry, he had over 100 followers with him, but only 12 were selected. Why? Because the others were not able to help him fulfill his purpose and his plan. There are many people in your life you may need to just be, have them become acquaintances and, and not depend on them to help you become a better person. And I know a lot of people, but there are only a few, a, a few people that I call friends and mentors. Like Paul, our goal should be to press toward the mark for the prize of a high calling that God has through Christ Jesus. Your future may be sitting next to you. Your future may be living with you. Your future may be on your job, at school, or just around the corner waiting for you to press toward that high calling, that mark that God has for you. So the question is, how do you stay focused in order to reach your goal and live into your future? David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'm going to dwell in God's house. You have goodness and mercy that will follow you. You're not alone on your journey. Jesus assured us that, that we have a comforter, the Holy Spirit, that is with us, with full of goodness and full of mercy, just for you. And secondly, God has outlined a future for you if we just stay focused. That future, that high calling, that purpose. And, and when that time is completed, then we know we have hope to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But how? You have to stay focused. There's an old story of a man who had bought a new hunting dog and, and he was eager to see how that dog would perform. So he took the little the, the, the dog out into the woods one day, and he was hoping to track down and bag some really big game. And no sooner had they gotten to the woods, the dog picked up the a scent of a bear, and he went off he went with the excited hunter close behind. And then the animal, the dog, stopped suddenly, and he sniffed the ground. And he, he headed down an altogether different path. He had caught the scent of a deer that had crossed the bear's path. A few minutes later, the process repeated itself. The dog stopped, smelled the ground, and headed in a still another direction. This time, the dog kept, caught the scent of a rabbit that had crossed the path of the deer, and the poor dog was sidetracked again. On and on it went until the breastless hunter, he, he finally caught up with his dog only to find his dog barking and, and proudly looking down the hole of a field mouse. We've seen this same thing destroy many people's lives. People that, that lose sight of their self-worth and, and true strengths, that, and they start to make unwise and damaging decisions. No matter how young or old you are, losing focus, not having any plans or goals has destroyed many followers of Jesus Christ. But I'm over 65. What can I do? You can be a blessing to somebody's life, if not just in your family. You can be a mentor. You can help so many. You can help feed the hungry. You can, you can help, help take care. I've seen people everywhere, over 60, over 70, doing things. They have a purpose and a plan. They want to be a blessing in somebody else's life. And, and as followers of Jesus Christ, 
When we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord before the church, you ask God for forgiveness and another opportunity in life. But so many times we get distracted. We start out with great desire to honor Christ, do noble, noble things, and pursue lofty goals. And when a series of distractions cross the trail of our journey, whether it's work or family or friends or, or your anxiety or your stress or your lack of self-control and the list can go and each one of these distractions has pulled many people far enough to take them off trail, off track. Gee, God honored your request for forgiveness and granted it to you. He allowed you an opportunity, another opportunity to get it right. Our sins are forgiven. We have a new life in Christ. So now we know we have goodness and mercy following us all the days of our remaining life. And therefore, we should remain focused knowing we have a future and a high calling in Christ Jesus. David said, my goal is to dwell with God. As, alt as believers, our ultimate goal is life with Christ. And so we ought to live out our future and do so with believing in the true and living God who loves everyone and receives everyone. There are those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There are those who are still trying to, to, to travel this, this path, this journey, all by yourself. And there's so many distractions, so many things that's going on around our nation and around the world that, that distracts us. And we forget who we are in Christ Jesus. So many people are trying to do it alone. And you don't have to. You don't have to. Because we have a God who loves us. And knows everything about us. As Pastor Abe mentioned earlier, God even knows the things that we try to hide. But God knows. And so if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you need to renew your faith in God, in Christ, then come see me or any of our pastoral leadership. And we'll be glad to, to walk the steps with you. And you can ask God to forgive you. You can ask God to give you another chance. You can ask God to receive your love. Pray about it. Think about it. Even if you're at home, God hears you at home. And God knows your heart. So as we close out this 23rd Psalm series, we close out with this psalm in our heart. And not just saying it, but believing it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. God restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, Lord, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You even anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. 
Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this gift, this love that you give us. We thank you, God, for being our shepherd, for watching over us and caring for us. Even, Lord, when we are walking through the shadow, that shadow can't hurt me because you are with me. And so, God, I ask in the name of Jesus that your holy presence will just continue to surround our lives as I live and move toward my future, reaching and pressing. And doing all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare and let's sing together our closing hymn that you'll find on page 178, Hope of the World, page 178. Please stand if you're able. may be seated. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, I will be going uh, home down to Kansas or up to Kansas. 
and uh, I'll be there all week. Just in case uh, I may not make it back by Sunday, and Sunday is first Sunday, I've asked if uh, the staff, if we could move communion to Easter Sunday. And not only will we have communion at the 815 service, we will have a baptism. So at the 1045 and 815, we'll have communion. We're going to have it on Easter Sunday, okay, which I think is quite fitting uh, because it is Resurrection Sunday. And what a great time to remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you have a problem with taking communion on Easter Sunday, we will have our Monday, our Thursday Monday service where we will be serving communion then. Amen? Okay. Now, for the next announcement I have, uh, on Thursday, uh, I was introduced to my new congregation, and it will be in Tremont, Illinois. And if some of you are not familiar with the area, Tremont is about Oh, 20, 25 minutes south of Peoria. So I'll be heading there and I'll start there effective July 1. And so I, I, I'm, I'm struggling. I was struggling all morning with mixed emotions uh, because I'm excited about the, the new appointment, but I'm sad that I will be leaving you guys then. But as I had mentioned, and, and as you already knew, I was serving as an interim pastor, remember, because of Pastor White. Uh, and so we knew that eventually I would be leaving. Uh, so we will just continue to love each other while I'm here, and, and we'll give our goodbyes as we see each other. But no, I have been blessed, so blessed, by serving uh, you guys, First Church, Carbondale, you've been a blessing to me. And I want you to know that I will truly miss you. But if you're ever up in the Peoria area, I can say this. Stop by and see me if you're there on Sunday and say hi. Amen? Amen. All right, let's, let's receive our benediction. May God's grace continue to abide with you. And his Holy Spirit surround your lives. And may the Spirit remind you that you have a shepherd, a living, a true and living God who loves you and cares about you and walks with you through each step of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive our postman.